Hi, my name's Burnham and I am the photographer here at Swoot Patagonia and I am currently in the Los Glaciares National Park here and I am here to give you some tips on photography in Patagonia and some of the equipment that you'll need. So the first thing I always bring with me, of course, is a landscape lens. Now the landscapes in Patagonia are just incredible. You know, you've got the, the towering granite peaks, blue rivers, blue lakes, wildlife, it, it's, it's got everything. And so my go-to lens is the 24 to 70. I think this gives me a bit of versatility in terms of focal length. Uh, but I also do bring with me the 16 to 35 for those super wide angle shots. The second lens I will always take with me is my trusty 200 to 600 telephoto lens. Now, I take this firstly because the wildlife here in Patagonia is amazing. Uh, you've got your penguins, Wanaco, Puma. There's a lot to photograph here when it comes to wildlife. But also, the telephoto lens is just great at compressing landscapes. So, you know, the peaks, um, Torres del Paine, Fitzroy there, they're quite far away often and that, that telephoto lens compresses the image and brings it all together and often you know creates a beautiful shot and if you can get some Wanaco or some wildlife in that then even better. Another thing that I will always take with me of course is a tripod. Um, now this is a travel tripod, um, it's really small, really compact, really lightweight which is great for me, I'm doing a lot of trekking, moving around a lot. Um, however, as you can maybe hear, it's quite windy in Patagonia, always. I mean, you occasionally get days that aren't, but generally you need to expect wind. So, do you go for a heavier tripod or a lightweight tripod? Well, that really depends on how much you're going to be trekking, camping, moving around. Um, I personally go for the lightweight one, but a heavier one, realistically, if you're doing long exposures, is going to work a lot better. In terms of camera body, um, for me, I'm focusing more on landscape than wildlife, so I am using a full frame body, um, 42 megapixel, just to you know really bring out the most in the landscape. Um, but of course, if you're after wildlife, then I would suggest getting a crop sensor, um, but this works really well for me. What I will say though is, some days you're gonna be trekking a long time and having a battery grip is gonna be extremely useful. Um, on that note, I will always bring extra batteries to Patagonia with me. You go through them quickly, it gets cold here, especially in winter, and having some extra batteries is going to be a lifesaver sometimes. I also bring a battery power pack because, you know, if you're camping, then this is gonna be a lifesaver when it comes to charging up your batteries, your laptop, your cameras. Definitely bring one or two of these at least. When traveling in Patagonia, I will also bring filters. I'm gonna bring a polarizing filter for those bright days, cut down the glare, and I'm gonna bring some ND filters just to smooth out some of the water shots with uh, waterfalls, streams, or rivers. Now, it does depend a little bit when you travel, but generally speaking, it's going to be cold, especially in the mornings and the evenings. And having a good pair of photography gloves uh, that you can maneuver the camera with, all the settings with, and even your phone is extremely useful. Your hands will get very cold, especially in the wind. Uh, and that brings me to another point about traveling at dawn and dusk. Once again, if you want to get into the right points for the right time for that sunrise shot, you are going to be leaving in the dark. And so you are going to need a head torch. And I would, I, I always bring two and I've got just a standard torch because you are going to be trekking out maybe at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., but it will be dark, and so you're gonna need a head torch. And of course, that brings me to my point of shooting at dawn and dusk. The sunsets, because of the latitude of Patagonia, the sunsets and the sunrises here are incredible. They last a long time, and you need to be out of that point photographing. In the day, if you get some dramatic clouds, that's great as well, but the color really brings out those, those colors in the landscape. So a couple of last little tips. Uh, I would always bring a sensor cleaner with you 
As I've said multiple times, the wind here is extreme. And when you're changing lenses, you know, it's going to get into the sensor once you've done it enough times. And bringing a sensor cleaner, cleaning it every night is a must. Um, another tip is if you're planning on drone photography, drones are banned in the national park, uh, period. So you can fly your drones, but you need to be outside the national parks. Uh, so if you're going to be doing that, that's absolutely fine. But if you are only going to be traveling in the national parks, there is really no point in bringing a drone. And I think the last point is the weather is unpredictable here. You can get four seasons in one day quite often. And so I would say bringing a weather sealed camera and lens uh, is pretty important. If you don't have a weather sealed camera, then you are going to bring a dry bag or just a simple plastic bag, but anything to keep your camera dry because the weather here does change in seconds. So, I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you are coming to Patagonia and you have any more questions, then please feel free to get in touch. I'll be more than happy to answer any queries that you have. And I'm going to leave you with some of the photos I've taken on my last trip in Los Glaciares National Park. Thanks.